Hello everyone, better late than never, but today I'm gonna to show you how to port over your CSGO level into CS2. There's a few things that we need to configure beforehand, and first of all, we'll want to go to Properties on Counter-Strike 2, make sure under DLC we have the Workshop Tools checked. This is what you actually need to have Hammer 5 and the Workshop Tools on your machine. Additionally, if we go to our Counter-Strike Global Offensive folder, you may still have CSGO here, where the old game content used to live. If you're on a new install, you won't have that. I am essentially on a new install here, so I'll show you how to get that back so we can actually get up and running with it. So I'm gonna head over to Steam really quick. I'm gonna right click on Counter-Strike 2, go to Properties, and then under Betas, I'm going to opt into the CSGO Demo Viewer beta. And when I click that, it's going to start downloading CSGO again. This is going to take a hot sec, but while that goes in the background, we'll take care of some other things that we need to do. First of all, you're going to need Python 2.7.14. Um, I think 2.7 generically works. I'll put a link in the description of this. There's some changes that you can make to the file, uh, the import script, if you'd like to use Python 3. Um, there's some more information on the VDC, but for this video, we're just going to use 2.7 add a few things to our system environmental variables. Uh, to do that, we can hit Windows key and I on our keyboard. That's gonna open the Windows settings here. And then just type about. And I'll take us to about your PC and over on the right, click advanced system settings. And we want the system properties dialog and we wanna to go to advanced. And then environmental variables. And then we'll have user and system variables. We're concerned with path. You'll want to add C Python 27. And then this other path is the Steam Apps Common Counter Strike Global Offensive Game Bin Win64. So this is the full path to the CS2 directory. And that is what goes here. And then we also need to add those same two paths over here in our system environmental variables. So it's just the same C Python 27 and then Steam apps all the way game bin win 64. We can close out of those. And if we want to check if it's working, we can hit Windows key R on our keyboard that will open the run prompt type CMD. And that will open up a command prompt for us. If we just type Python, we should get these three little carrots and it'll tell us the version of Python. You can just type exit with um, open and close paren. If it does this, it means the system paths are working and we can just type Python to do some stuff. Uh, next, we're going to want to install a package called Colorama, something that Valve used for some coloring of text. So we'll type python-m pip install color rama this should go really quick um, you can ignore the pip version we're mostly concerned about successfully installed color rama next we will go take a look at our game content there's a few things that need to be set up correctly for this to work we need a folder that contains essentially the raw content vmf and it needs to be set up with maps materials models and this is where all of your source content would be so inside my maps folder here if i scroll down the map we're going to be porting is called rbfn2 that's the vmf right there and my raw materials and raw models are also here as well additionally this path with our raw content in it must contain no spaces if it contains spaces it will not be able to properly convert the map so you have two choices. You can either take all of this stuff and copy and paste it somewhere else. My folder is huge, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do a little workaround. If we go back to our command prompt, we can type subst. And then we give it a drive letter. And I'm going to copy this path. And then open quote, paste, close quote. And what that is going to do is it's going to create a J drive on my computer, which points right to this same folder. So if you'll notice, we have spaces here. We have no spaces here, which is exactly what we want. 
If you don't have spaces in your path, you just you don't have to do anything. You're good to go. It looks like the beta has finished installing. So if I go to Counter Strike Global Offensive, we should see we have CSGO here now. Now we need to get the content into the CSGO folder. I'll go into CSGO. The content must be in this folder with our source one game info. It cannot be elsewhere. I have the BSP, so we can either lift the content from the BSP by using 7-zip easily. So if you go to open archive and then the pound sign right here, you can go into the pack and then copy, you know, all of the materials and models into your game folder. Or if you have all of your stuff organized nicely, I'm going to be porting a couple other maps. I will just copy over the materials and models for the whole Red Bull Flick project into the folder. Next, we will load CS2, this time selecting the workshop tools. Once these load, hit create new add-on and then name it what you're going to make your add-on and then click create. This should make the new add-on. And now to build the import command. I will have this in the description. It's also on the VDC, um, which has additional documentation for this process. So these are the paths and variables that we need to replace. So to start with the source one game info path, which is our Counter-Strike Global Offensive CSGO with our old gameinfo.txt. Put that here, make sure that's in quotes. Our S1 content path. Remember that this is that path that cannot have any spaces. And in my case, it is just going to be J. You can put this in quotes as well to make yourself feel better. Next, we need our S2 game info path. And this is going to be Steam Apps Common Counter-Strike Global Offensive. We want the game folder and CSGO. And in here you should see gameinfo.gi. That's the new game info for CS2. So we'll put that here also in quotes. The add-on name is going to be rbf underscore n2 since this is the add-on that we created. And then the map name is rbf n2 as well. And then make sure you have used BSP at the end. That's going to tell the import tool to actually compile the map with VBSP to clean up the geometry sum. Inside of the common Counter-Strike Offensive Game CSGO folder, you should see import scripts. Copy this path to this import scripts folder. And then inside your command prompt, type CD, open quote, paste that in, close quote, enter. You should have your working path change to say game CSGO import scripts and a little greater than sign. Now go over to our command line text that we have put together. And if all of this is correct, you should just be able to paste this in here, hit enter. You should get this little warning. It's going to tell us that there's anything in that add-on that we created is going to get blown away. Since we just created the add-on, it probably doesn't matter. Just hit enter. We should see happy text here, and then we should see something reminiscent of VBSP show up, which is right here. I don't know why it says leaked. I compiled the map with Hammer on Source 1 right before this, and there was no VBSP leak. So I don't know why it does that. I don't know what's going on. After a while, you may think nothing's happening. If you want to sanity check yourself, you can go into Task Manager, and you should see the Source 1 import.exe churning away. That's going to sit there for a minute. And then after a while, we should start to see some stuff happen in the console here. All right, took about three to four minutes uh, before I got to this point. So just be patient and let it go. Um, you may have noticed if you're watching the console, it had some problems with some IO stuff because in our map, we're targeting self with a bunch of stuff and it, it does not like that. So you may have to fix up your IO once you have it ported. This process, it is converting all of the assets, and this does take a while depending on how many assets you have. We have a couple hundred megabytes of bespoke assets for this level, so I will just come back to a little jump cut. All right, so about 23 minutes later, we are complete. So we'll go back to the workshop tools and double click on this add-on. The tools will load, it's going to load CS2, and it's going to pop up a couple other windows, like an asset browser, 
the new tools do take a little while to load, so I'm going to cut ahead to when they're loaded. So CS2 is now open in the background, and I have my asset browser open. I'm going to click Tools up in the top right and just click Hammer. Hammer is open. We should be able to go to File and then Open. And then inside of our Counter-Strike Global Offensive Content, Add-ons, RBFN2, Maps folder, we should see the N2.vmap, Environment Prefab, and Prefab. If we double-click that, Regular VMap should load our file. So here is our entire level. I'll go ahead and just make this bigger. Some more complicated textures may need manual fix up and you can go through and resolve those and whatever issues they may have. You can click on them and lift assets under the mouse and then open them in the material editor if you want. And then you can kind of start fixing them up from there. There are some post fix up steps that you will need to perform and I'll run through them quickly here. I'm not going to do them all to this map because it takes uh, honestly a large amount of time. You'll notice that we're in the main map here and in our basically scene explorer or outliner as I call it, we see the prefab of n2prefab.vmap. So this is the prefab of the actual map. And then inside of here, we can actually start to interact with some of the world. So here's some of the groups. Here's Here's like some light entities that are placed in the level. One thing that you'll want to do as part of the fix up step, it is suggested to just remove all lights that were placed during the conversion process from your level. If you don't want to replace them, one of the things that you'll have to do is adjust the brightness on them and the ranges. In CS2, the range of a light directly impacts the compile time. So you want to kind of rein in these range values. So I would suggest going to the entity report and then under class, just type light and then you'll see all of the light entities. The purple ones indicate that they're inside of a prefab. The white ones mean that they're inside of this level. Again, I would suggest deleting these, but if you just want to fix the values, what you're really interested in is the range. So some of these lights came in with ranges in the 50,000s. This is just how I lit the level in CSGO and it worked fine there, but this will drastically increase compile times in CS2 for absolutely no reason. So if you're not going to delete them, at least go through, use the entity report to make sure all of the ranges are set to reasonable values. The other thing that you will need to manually fix up are cube map volumes. So you should see these little guys floating around. The importer has tried to handle this as best as it can. And if you do try to select something and you can't click on it, you're probably on a prefab. So we can see over here again in the outliner that I have a prefab selected. If you double click, it'll edit in place and we can kind of see the prefab tree that we're in here. Now I can select these. These are the NV combined light probe volumes. You will absolutely want to delete all of these that were placed by the importer and you will want to re-cube map your entire level. This is a longer process and I will not show you how to do it here. Please see the post fix up steps on the VDC link in description on what you need to do for that. It's very long and annoying to do. The other thing that we need to do is we'll go up to this prefab here and if we fly out of the map, this is my 3D skybox over here. Things work a bit different in CS2 compared to CSGO for 3D skyboxes. So to easily get this, we'll grab that guy. I want to make sure I don't have anything else selected. I will cut it and then I will go to file, new, and then I'll hit control shift V to paste it, start center of originals, and then just hit OK. So it's just going to get slapped down there, which is totally fine. And then I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm going to name this RBF N2 Skybox. Next, I'll go to Map and then Map Properties. And we want to change the map type from standard to 3D Skybox. Then we will switch back to our main level, which should still be open under the Window tab. Back in the main map, I'll go up to the top level here. We'll hit Shift E, drop a new entity. We're going to change its class to Skybox Reference. We're going to change its transform to just be 000. And then we will select Map Name. 
click the little uh, magnifying glass. Then we can select uh, RBF N2, and then we want the N2 skybox map, and then just hit save. If we then come up to the top and hit the show editor only objects, we should now see our 3D skybox projected around the level, just like we would in Hammer++, and this is how it will appear in game. One thing to note about the 3D skybox map is that this is a separate vmap that does need to be compiled. So once you are happy with your 3D skybox, compile it fully, and then when you go back to work on your main level, it will just keep using that already compiled 3D skybox map. Meaning you don't have to compile your 3D skybox every time you update your main level, but that also means you have to remember to compile your 3D skybox whenever you change it. One more thing to remember from the main map is if we go to entity report, we want the NV sky. The compiler has placed an NV sky. We want to copy this into our skybox map. And then we also want to copy our entity report and then light environment. And we just want these copied over because obviously we want our 3D skybox to have the same lighting as our regular map. So those are both there. If you want, you can throw them into the actual area with the map. But other than that, you should be good to go. The last thing we'll do is compile and test it. I'll switch back to my skybox map really quick. I'll hit F9 and I will not generate lighting. I'll just hit build over here really quick. So that is done. I'll switch back to my main map. I'm going to go to map and then map properties. I don't want to deal with viz right now, so I'm going to change pre-computed visibility from full visibility to just disabled. And then I will no viz, hit build and run. It's going to turn it back on, I guess. We'll just let it go. The map is loading. I'll open up my V console. All right, and this is a straight import with no lighting. There's some weirdness going on with the skybox because that has to get fixed for this specific level, but this is the general steps on how to import your CSGO map into CS2 Hammer. One last note is if you plan to edit geometry, you may notice that everything has come in triangulated, and this is really hard to work with. If you select a bunch of faces with faces selected, and you come to Combine Faces, turn on Preserve Materials, Preserve UVs, and then hit Combine Faces, and it'll collapse all of those triangles down into just that face. It makes it really easy. Say you can turn, this was obviously just a square brush before, you can turn this back into essentially what are quads um, by just combining faces. And that makes that much easier to work with. There's still a ton of fix up. If you have questions, which I'm sure you will, I had a ton, I would highly suggest joining the Source Engine Discord, link in the description. Thanks for watching and hope it helps.